Good morning, friends. Welcome to Good Morning Friends Podcast, where we bring the latest news and updates to you, the bride around the world. Good morning and welcome everyone. Today is Saturday, February 11th, and I'm Stephen Tutani. And hello from VGR headquarters in Jeffersonville, Indiana. I am William McMasters. Good morning, Brother Will. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Brother Stephen. How are you? I am bubbling over. I have a testimony I just heard, and I'd like to share it with you if you would like. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I was on the phone not too long ago with the brother from here in Zim. He was just speechless, and he sounded overwhelmed with what the Lord had done for him. In short, he had been failing to meet an obligation where he had to pay for his home to the point where he was going to lose his home. He was desperate, as you can imagine, and said, I had nowhere else to look but up. Well, one early morning, he woke up to finish off a tape that he had started the day before. The tape was titled, The Seven Compound Names of Jehovah. On listening the prophet spoke directly to him. Let me play the quote here. It's always best when he says it. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, if he was here and was talking to you, the only thing that he could do now tonight is you'd say, well, maybe you say, I have need, I'm about to lose my home and I'm about to have some money to for my home. Well, he'd tell you, do you believe it? Yes. And he'd tell you, if you believe it, you'll get it. Wow. What a quote. I mean, it's just perfect for a situation. I mean, how that must have just thrilled his soul when he heard that. Oh, it did. It was direct. It was personal. And the brother said a definite assurance anchored deep in his soul and said, I knew my case was over. Amen. So well, that morning he woke up and he called up his landlord and made arrangements for payment before any fruits had wow. manifested. He said, but I knew God was doing something. Well, sure enough, that day, the sales at his little business were booming, and he was able to settle his obligation and ended up not losing his home, just like the Lord had assured him. Man, the Lord is so good. (laughs) Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, this message is alive. There's no doubt. Oh, yes. It's a living word on those tapes. The brother kept saying, uh, this God speaks. He speaks through his word and through his prophet. Hey, Amen. We are completely surrounded by his blessings. I mean, everywhere that we look, he is so good to us. What a testimony and, and a great reminder that all that we have need of, no matter the situation, it's on those tapes. As most of the world knows by now, there was a massive 7.8 magnitude earthquake that shook the southeastern part of Turkey and the northeastern part of Syria this past Monday. This was terrible news as many thousands have lost their lives and the death toll continues to rise. The quake is one of the strongest to hit the region in more than 100 years. At this point, we don't have much information concerning the believers in these areas, but we did hear from Brother Beirut, our VGO representative in Turkey. He said that he got some news where there were nine message-believing families were displaced from their homes due to the damage to their properties, but the Lord protected them. Oh, thank you, Lord, for preserving their lives. I pray we continue to hear more positive reports from believers in these hard-hit areas. On another note, there's no doubt that this is just another sign of the times we're living in and that the coming of the Lord must be very close. Hey, Amen. Well, we'll certainly be keeping those affected in prayer, and we'll update you as we receive more information. Well, this morning we're very privileged to be joined by the VGR representative for Congo, Brazzaville, our precious brother Kina. Welcome, my brother. Merci. Thank you, and welcome to you too. Well, Brother Kina, we're going to dive right into it. We got some very exciting news that you just received a shipment of Agapo tablets. We first received uh, 5,000 tablets, and now we just received this shipment with 1,000 tablets about just two days ago. Oh, wow. That is wonderful. So, have you received any feedback or testimonies from the 5,000 tablets that you've already distributed? How has those impacted the believers in your country? Yes, there definitely was an impact. 
There was a church, for instance, in, in Pokora, who was speaking bad things about the vision, but after receiving the tablets, they are now started to listen to the tapes directly using the tablets. It, and everyone wants to have the tablets. Praise the Lord. Uh, with these new tablets, can you tell us about the upcoming tablet distributions, like when and where and what you're going to be doing? At this time, we, we have a little issue and a DLA to go up north the country uh, where we intend to distribute almost 2,000 tablets. But hopefully we'll be able to go there by the end of this month. And for the 1,000 tablets that we just received, we will be updating them and we will surely be distributing them within the country shortly. That's exciting news. With the areas of distribution, uh, I'm sure you've been in contact with the believers there. How are the expectations and the feelings of the people about to receive their tablets? Right now, everything is very much expected. Uh, the people are in big expectation all through the country. And we've noticed especially all the regions that borders our country with the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, the Central African Republic, and also in Cameroon. The people are calling every day to ask about when they will be receiving the tablets. <laughs> and uh, since my secretary has been falling sick recently, we had to delay our trip to uh, about the 19th of this month of February. Uh, the devil always fights that work. <laughs> yes. But we know that uh, the message will get into their hands for sure. I got an opportunity to read a little bit of your testimony, and I saw that you had worked uh, with the bride in Congo Brazzaville for over 20 years now, giving them the message. I would like to know, how has the work changed since these tablets have become available uh, in the recent past from when you started in the very beginning? Exactly, as you said, the work changed greatly in comparison to as it was before. We used to receive books that we were receiving them from the DRC, and this was always bringing a lot of slowliness and issues. But now in our days, you know, with the technology that changed with the internet and everything, the distribution became so efficient now, and we're able to distribute so much easier than before. If we look at these last 20 years that we just lived in the work, though it's unbelievable how the work has grown, and we're able to reach to so many more people. And uh, it feels that the work, even though it's bigger and greater, it's easier, and we're able to now give tablets directly to the hands of each family of the message. And this is awesome, and really, the work is going very well. Praise the Lord. Oh, what a wonderful uh, report, and it's truly amazing how the Lord has allowed the technology to be used to further this gospel. And truly, it is a, a uh, short and quick work. Brother Kina, is there anything that you'd like to say to the believers around the world that sponsor these tablets to make these distribution trips possible? If there's something that I really have on my heart to say and encourage the people is, you know, it is so great to uh, have the opportunity to have a tablet at home. And we understand that this is a thanks to the, those the families who did sacrifice to sponsor the tablets. So we really pray the Lord to that he continues to touch the hearts of the people so that the message families could continue to receive the tablets in their houses. Well, thank you very much, Brother Kina, for that special report. And we'll certainly be praying for you and the team and your secretary that you mentioned was not well. The devil's always fighting, but I believe the believers' prayers will help carry you through. You have a special job, Amen. and may God bless you. God bless you. Shalom. God bless you. Shalom. We received the following report from the European office as they were invited to attend a weekend of fellowship around the world in London, England. The brothers who helped with the arrangements invited people from all over the country to attend the meeting. Believers also flew in from Spain, Colombia, Canada, Scotland, and Romania, 
while others drove from Holland and Germany. Nearly 200 people attended the gathering. Saturday was a day of fellowship, songs, praise, and a creations class was planned for the children. Talking with the believers present at the event, they expressed how they have been enjoying listening to the tapes that have been posted on the Bram Tabernacle website and feel united with the bride around the world. On Saturday, we distributed Agapo Hero tablets, Bibles, tracts, books, pictures, and prayer cloths. We were also able to do a presentation of the Agapo Tour film and encourage the believers to stay with the message. And as always, the highlight of the meeting is the tape. On Sunday, the Eagles gathered together in London at 5 p.m., which is 12 p.m. Jeffersonville time, and listened to the message, Events Made Clear by Prophecy. As Brother Brandon had mentioned on this tape, we were gathered together internationally. How true it is in this present day when believers from around the world are united at the same time feasting on the stored up food. Amen. While listening to the tape, so many were sitting on the edge of their seat as God's prophets spoke and referred to many prophecies for this day. Every word that was spoken was a highlight. The atmosphere was, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us along the way? At the end of the tape, when Brother Branham had us lay hands on each other and prayed for us, there was such an anointing and a wonderful atmosphere. We knew God had answered our prayer. Praise be to God. And with the meetings being concluded, we are continuing our journey as we like to make the most of these long trips. We will be visiting other believers in various places along the route before returning to mainland Europe. God bless you, VGR European team. Today we'd like to share a testimony we received from a sister in Kenya. Our prophet's commission was, If you get the people to believe you, nothing shall stand before your prayers, not even cancer. And as believers, we are true witnesses of that, and we believe that commission is still alive today. Here's an audio testimony from that sister. God bless you, saints. My name is Elizabeth Mtunga. I am from Kenya, and I wanted to give my testimony about the Lord healing me. In November 2020, I got COVID, 95% of my lungs were eaten up by COVID and only 5% was working. So by the time I was taken to hospital, um, I was put on an induced coma because uh, my lungs were not working as they should. Um, so I was in the induced coma for about two weeks. Then the doctors uh, finally got me out of the coma. Then they put me on the ventilator so that I could be able to, it could help with expanding the lungs so that I can be able to breathe on my own. Uh, I was in ICU for two months. And one of the things I can say, and I thank God for, is that I was able to press play while in hospital and the Lord was working on me as the doctors were also doing their part, but the Lord was doing a bigger part and I was in hospital from November until December 31st and then I was sent home but before I went home the doctor looked at me and he told me lady you'll not be able to breathe on your own neither will you be able to walk so you'll be on a wheelchair and you'll have to carry oxygen with you I know who I believe and I know what he has said he has said he has healed me and I kept claiming that and I remember calling my children and telling them that they need to pray for new lungs and the believers in Kenya and all over the world were praying for me as uh, I was still in hospital. And when I went home, I went home, of course, with a concentrator to be able to help me breathe. But after six months, going to the doctor and the doctor started looking at my lung and is like, no, uh, <laughs> you are not the same person. Actually, you should have been dead long ago. And I'm like, no, I will live and not die because that's what my Bible says. And so I'm just here to encourage another believer and tell them the Lord is still healing. The Lord has returned my lungs to full capacity. As we speak, when I put the oximeter, it's at 99 or 98. And so I thank the Lord and all the believers who prayed for me when I was unwell. And we are grateful to the Lord with this message. And when I was in hospital, like I said, I was pressing play and, use, and having my prayer cloth there. We are serving a mighty God. We thank God for this message. We are at a point where we speak and it happens. So I thank the Lord. I thank him every day. God bless you.
Each of us would love to have the opportunity to visit VGR offices in all the different countries. Even though we may never get the chance, we are blessed this week to have a glimpse of what a typical day is like in the Bujimai office in Democratic Republic of Congo. Let's listen to Brother Germain as he tells us all about it. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am your brother Germain Chilumba, Administrative Secretary of the Voice of God Mbujumai Office, located in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The city of Mbujumai and its surrounding has a population of 6 million people. The Mbujumai Office serves 10 libraries in the central area of DRC. There are seven employees, including two Chilumba translators that work in the Mbujumai Office. Our office serves 2,479 message churches, which represents approximately 248,140 believers. The Mbujimai office is open from Monday to Friday of each week, from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The main activity of the office of the Voice of God Mbujimai is the spreading of the message of the end time preached by the Prophet of God, our precious brother William Marion Branham. To fulfill this noble task, the office has organized three services. The service of listening to the tapes, the service of reading the sermon books, the lending service. For the lending service, we have many brothers and sisters who will borrow the message books and take them home to read. They will then bring the book back and exchange them for a different book. During the day, we receive anyone who comes to listen to the tape to read here at the office or to borrow the books to read at home. Twice in January, our office received a group of brothers accompanied by a sister who came to have a quiet time in our garden while listening to a tape of Brother Branham. Generally speaking, the population of Mbujimai is interested in the message, loves the message, and supports the work of the voice of God. May the Lord bless you richly, your brother in Christ, Germain Chilumba. Thank you for sharing that, Brother Germain. May God bless you and all the staff at the Mbujimai office for your service to his bride. And finally, we would like to end this episode with a really sweet report from a faithful tape girl from La Mahara, Mexico. It reads, Dear YF, I got married in October of last year. I'm thankful to the Lord for giving me a husband who is a tape boy. My husband and I met because of the first Stillwater's home camp, and we're both happy to have been part of Young Foundations. I was 18 years old when I started to visit YF and started doing the tape quizzes. How thankful I am to the Lord for what that meant in my life as a young girl and how it came at a time when I needed it the most. At that time, the only young person I had fellowship with was my sister, and it was a very difficult time that I was going through. So you can imagine when I started taking the quizzes what it was like for me to see my name on the list of results among hundreds of other young people from around the world who were also taking the YF quizzes. From then on, my life certainly changed. I was now among hundreds of young people who were listening to the same tapes in the same month. Wow. She continues, Here in my area, the cell phone signal was very weak at the time, and we didn't have internet at home. I remember how we would travel to a town about 20 minutes away to download the monthly quizzes and the VGR testimonies. I didn't even know how to use the internet browser back then. I remember the first time I tried to visit the YF website, I paid for the time I used the internet service, but I couldn't visit the website because I didn't know how to use the internet. She continues, Thank you for all the work and countless hours you have put in for his young bride. I'm a little person who truly received the encouragement and fellowship around his word and what I needed in my young life. I really can't describe what Young Foundations has meant in my life. And now if the Lord tarries a little more and he gives us children— We have what we need to encourage them in the way of the Lord, and their names will certainly be among the young warriors who listen to the tapes and answer the quizzes. She concludes, There are so many special experiences, but I will end by saying this. It has been so special that it's not just a temporary excitement, but it is something eternal that he gave me in that time by staying in his word. Amos 3.7 We certainly love what the Lord gives us through his servants, the prophets. Your little sister, blessed by your work. I love you in the love of God.
God bless you richly, Sister Adriana. Wow. What a special little testimony. You know, it's so neat to see how the Lord supplied just what our sister needed to sustain her through those critical years of her life by keeping her in the Word. Amen. And not only that, he gave her a tape boy for her husband. No doubt if the Lord tarries, her children will be blessed and encouraged by that same life-giving Word. Amen. Well, that wraps up today's episode. Be sure to be looking for updates during the week on Branham.org, WhatsApp, and our Lifeline app. Brother Stephen, I know you'll be on a distribution trip this weekend, and we'll certainly be remembering you all in prayer, and we look forward to hearing some wonderful testimonies from it. Thank you, my friend. We certainly appreciate that. We're looking forward to what the Lord has in store. To all of you, thank you for joining us today. Lord willing, we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, God bless you, and shalom. Shalom.